Ladies and gentlemen, good day and welcome to Hindustan Zinc second quarter and half year FI 2025 earnings conference call. As a reminder, all participant lines will be in the listen only mode and there will be an opportunity for you to ask questions after the presentation concludes. Should you need assistance during this conference call, please signal an operator by pressing star then zero on your touchstone phone. Please note that this conference is being recorded. And now hand the conference over to Ms. Kritika Mehta, Investor Relations. Thank you and over to you, Ms. Mehta. Thank you, Neera. A very good afternoon, everyone. I welcome you all to Hindustan Zinc's second quarter and half year ending 30th September 24 results briefing. In this call, we will refer to Q2 FI25 investor presentation available on our company's website. Some of the information on this call may be forward-looking in nature and is covered by the safe harbor language on second slide of the set presentation. Today, on the call, we have with us our CEO, Mr. Arun Mishra, and our CFO, Mr. Sandeep Modi. Mr. Mishra will begin with an update on business performance, while Mr. Modi will walk you through the financial performance, after which we will open the floor for questions. I now request Mr. Mishra to begin today's call. Over to you, sir. Thank you, Kritika. A very good afternoon to all of you. Thank you for joining us today for the second quarter and half-year FY25 results briefing. Before we dive into presentation, I want to inform you with profound sadness and a heavy heart that there has been an extremely unfortunate incident in our Sindeshar Kudma underground mine on 19th of August 2024, where we have lost two lives due to the inadvertent entry of the Jumbo machine into an open stove, resulting in fatal injuries. I extend my deepest condolences to the families of the deceased and assure them that we stand in solidarity with them as they navigate these difficult times, offering them full support. It is depressing to encounter such incidents in spite of a constant emphasis on inculcating a culture of safety first across every corner of our business. Post an in-depth investigation, we will implement robust control measures and review our current safety measures to prevent such tragedies in future. Further, breaking the stereotypes against women, we have established all women surface rescue teams of 30 employees fully equipped and trained in critical areas including walk at height and confined spaces, etc. across locations. Our first all-women underground mine rescue team has also gone global, securing the title of world's second best women's task force at the 13th International Mine Rescue Competition held in Colombia. Such path-breaking initiatives and industry-leading people practices have brought recognition to Hindustan Zinc as an employee's choice workplace at the WE Matter Global Employees Choice Awards of 2024. Featuring the Zinc City Udaipur, we organized India's most beautiful Vedanta Zinc City Half Marathon during the quarter for a noble cause of Run for Zero Hunger, garnering more than 5,000 participants and also hosted the prestigious Zinc College 2024 for around 100 international delegates from over 20 countries, solidifying India's zinc intensive low carbon future. Coming to the advancement on the sustainability front, we have extended our partnership with Serentica Renewables India Private Limited with the third round the clock power delivery arrangement for 25 years, increasing the total RE power capacity to 530 megawatts with a guaranteed power supply of 315 megawatts in each 15 minutes time block. This agreement takes the overall renewable power supply to an equivalent of 70% of the operational power requirement across the operations of Hindustan Zinc as against the current overall renewable power share of 14%, resulting in a 69% carbon emission reduction from 5.5 million ton CO2 equivalent to 1.7 million ton CO2 equivalent per annum. Last quarter, as you already know, we have commenced our journey towards zinc-based battery by partnering with US-based Hesa Technologies as a preferred supplier for the nickel-zinc batteries. Further advancing in this space, Hindustan Zinc is collaborating with Jawaharlal Nehru Center for Advanced Scientific Research, a premier institute sponsored by the Department of Science and Technology, Government of India, for the development of new age zinc-based battery technologies, accelerating the global transition to a sustainable energy solution. 
as an update on our corporate social responsibility, Hindustan Zinc's unwavering efforts to bring in a positive impact on all communities intertwined with our operations have been recognized at the fourth Social Impact Award by the CSR Universe. Our state-of-the-art Zinc Football Academy has also been recognized as the Sports Academy of the Year at the Sports India Awards 2024. A quick snapshot of few key CSR initiatives taken during the quarter is provided on slide 12 for your reference. Moving to the market update, as per leading analysts and latest updates, the market witnessed buoyed up sentiments despite the prevailing geopolitical tensions. Post a larger than expected rate cut by US Fed and the policy support measures announced by China, with an increase in demand from improved manufacturing activities on the back of lower interest rates, coupled with consider, um, constricted business metal supply growth, we remain bullish on the metal prices. India, which is the fastest growing economies of the world, is forecast to have a GDP growth rate of 7% and these demands a higher supply of metals to cater to the growing disparity between production and consumption, which is being translated into a steady increase in the metal imports. The steel production is also expected to reach over 300 million tons per annum by 2030 as compared to current production level of just over 100 million tons per annum. This deficit, however, ensures a strong domestic market for industrial zinc. The domestic zinc demand has grown sequentially and is expected to remain strong, positioning India as the third largest zinc consumer by 2026. The silver prices touched their highest $32.48 per dry ounce in the month of September. In India, with the reduction in bullion import duty from 15% to 6%, domestic prices have fallen significantly. However, with improving customer sentiments and expected industrial demand, silver market is poised to grow much stronger. Giving an update on the operational performance of the company, I am extremely pleased to inform you that Hindustan Zinc has recorded its highest ever second quarter and half-year mined and refined metal production. The mined metal production in second quarter stood at 256,000 tons, up 2% year-on-year, while the refined metal production in second part second quarter was 262,000 tons, higher, eight, higher by 8% year-on-year. Our precious metal silver production also stood at 184 tons, up 2% year-on-year, and up 10% sequentially. Although the humor is currently under wrap up stage, we have produced an additional silver of 3, and 3, million, 3 metric tons of silver and 1.5 kilotons of metal. Full ramp up is expected by quarter 4 of FY25, enabling the achievement of 33 tons of designed silver production. Here, I would like to bring your attention to an important yet overlooked fact that Hindustan Zinc boasts an industry leading compounded annual production growth rate of around 5% in metal and silver, which is way ahead of other global zinc and silver peers. With consistent efforts during the quarter, we have also delivered a significant cost reduction of 6% over last year to help the company register a net profit of 2,327 crore with a massive growth of 35% over last year on the back of year-on-year -year growth in total revenue by 22%. Coming to projects, progress for the new 160,000 tons per annum roaster in Devari and the 510,000 tons Hindustan Zinc Fertilizer Private Limited project is on track with final commissioning targeted by quarter four of this year and quarter two of next year respectively. Talking on till date production, we have recorded a refined metal production of 524,000 tons in H1 of FY25, which is up 5% year on year. Considering a similar improvement in second half of this financial year, defined metal production, we are con confident on achieving the guidance and would like to keep it unchanged. With this, I hand over the call to Sandeep for an update on financial performance. Thank you, Mr. Mishra, and a very good afternoon, everyone. As Mr. Mishra highlighted the best quarter operational performance, it is noteworthy that financial performance has been well supported by consistent cost reduction. I am happy to share that company has achieved the lowest second quarter cost in the last four years. 
with the increase in share of our renewable energy power as a part of third PDA with Serentica as a group captive scheme, our major cost bucket of power would be predictable as it is a 25-year flat rate without any inflation. It will help us to move towards our design cost of $1,000 per ton in a faster way. Along with the favorable LME environment, the resultant financial numbers have been in the best in terms of EBITDA margin, clocking over 50% highest in last eight quarters with 450 bits YOY increase in margin. Our revenue, EBITDA, and PET before exceptional items have been the best in last six quarters in absolute terms. Precious metal segment, that is silver segment, continues to contribute well around 40% in our overall segment results. Our domestic primary zinc market share has also improved significantly to 78% from 71% last year in the same quarter. Before dwelling into the details of the financials, I am excited to share with you that Hindustan Zinc has won bronze award at the 5th Tax India Online Taxation Awards 24 for outstanding tax transparency in the corporate above rupees 5,000 crore turnover category, along with multiple other recognition including the GST Compliance Excellence Awards and the 8 Tax Strategy and Planning Summit and Awards, etc. Underscoring the company's unwavering commitment towards transparency and less governance practices. Adding the government is the commitment to empower the MSME sector. Hindustan Zinc has taken a lead and prioritized payments to its MSME vendor with an average payment cycle of 23 days during the quarter, which is half of the statutory requirement of 45 days. This corroborates our strong emphasis on the ESC principles, fostering trust in our supply chain partnership to enhance social responsibility. Now, detailing on the financial performance, the total revenue from operation during the quarter stood at 8,252 crore, up 22% YOY with metal, metal and silver volume and prices, further supported by a strong dollar and marginally offset by lower lead prices. It's up 2% quarter on quarter. Uh, on account of metal, lead and silver volume, partly offset by lower zinc volume and metal prices. For the half year, the revenue stood at 16,382 crore, up 16% YOY on account of better metal volume and the silver prices, further supported by a strong dollar and partly offset by lower silver volume and lead prices. The quarter to zinc cost of production before royalty stood at US dollar 1071 per ton, lower by 6% YOY on account of higher volume, better linkage coal availability, further supported by softened coal and input commodity prices, along with the operational efficiency year on year. It was lower 3% sequentially in line with better linkage coal availability, operational efficiencies, and softened coal and input commodity prices, further supported by better asset price realizations. Hindustan Zinc has delivered a 7% reduction in the half year cost of production, which clocked the four year lowest COP of $1,089 per ton on H1 basis and for the quarter to $1,071, indicating a progress towards recording the fourth year lowest cost for the full year. The resulting EBITDA for the quarter registered a sixth quarter highest as stated earlier at a rupees 4,164 crore, up 33% YOY and 6% quarter on quarter. For the H1, it stood at 8,109 crore, up 25% YOY in line with the revenue and cost of production. The consolidated net profit before exceptional item for the quarter stood at it's the highest in the last six quarter at 2,389 crore, up 38% YOY and 2% quarter on quarter. Net profit before exception item for the half year stood at 4,734 crore, up 28% YOY. Coming to net profit after exceptional item, it was 2,327 crore for the quarter, 35% YOY in line with data and down 1% quarter on quarter on account of exceptional item higher finance cost and tax expenditure offset by higher EBITDA. For the half year, it stood at 4,672 crore, up 27% YOY in line with EBITDA. As a global industry leader, we have always been vigilant on the market dynamics, proactively monitoring and assessing their impact on our business. Last quarter, we have hit 90 KT of our expected zinc production for the full year as an ideal opportunity surface to cash in the prevailing volatility in the market. This quarter, we have further sold forward 61 KT of zinc, totaling the outstanding hedge position net of squared of the during the quarter at 99 KT of the zinc production for the remaining part of the fiscal year at an average price of US dollar 3008 per ton. Taking it a notch up, we have taken a confident leap of expanding our hedge to our precious metal, that is silver, 
During the quarter, we have sold forward 83 metric ton of the silver for the second half of the year at an average price of 32.26 per trial. During the quarter, the company has locked in a gain of rupees 60 crore through its strategic hedging program. While Hindustan gains industry leading production growth rate, as Mr. Mishra mentioned, is worth mentioning, it is just one out of the numerous parameters like completely integrated operations, global cost leadership, ESG leadership, long mine life with second highest wind reserve globally. India's only silver producer prime, through primary route and consistent AAA rated by Crisil and other agencies, which differentiate it from its global peers. While benefiting from these strong competitive advantages, Hindustan Zinc has been a consistently recording a higher EBITDA margin among its global peers. Coming to the closure, we keep our cost and capex guidance intact. And now I open the floor for your questions. Thank you. Thank you very much. We will now begin with the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and one on the touchstone telephone. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star and two. Participants are requested to use handsets while asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. Participants, you may press star and one to ask a question. The first question is from the line of Amit Dixit from ICICI Securities. Please go ahead. Uh, yeah, hi. Uh, good evening, everyone, and congratulations for a good performance. A uh, couple of questions from my side. The first one is that the bio plant was run on lead mode uh, during the quarter. Now, lead prices were uh, relatively subdued. So, was it to exhaust the existing inventory that we might have uh, since SK9 uh, production was also a little bit lower, as mentioned in the press release? Or was it to take advantage of the higher silver prices uh, and what would be uh, the uh, mode of operation going ahead? So, uh, technically, uh, we operated on the lead mode to take advantage of silver prices, absolutely correct. Also, once we made the changeover, uh, immediately returning back to zinc would require some more further uh, distill, you know, distillation of the zinc product in the pyro mode when we run. So otherwise, you would be producing product which will not be uh, fetching us the same premium like a zinc SHG that we sell. So that would require some more distillation columns to be put in. So we normally do the late run if we attempt, whenever we pick up, at least we try to give a four or five month row at a um, operation in a row. So that, you know, the material that silver has to get into WIP, then from WIP it has to get into bullion, then it goes into refining. So that whole cycle can be completed and we can take care of the WIP or locked up silver before we exit that mode and get into zinc plus lead mode. So we say that we, we see that another maybe one or two months of operation would help us recover the silver which is locked in the WIP and uh, then we can transfer into the zinc plus lead mode sometime towards the end of this year and zinc prices are steadily you know at around 3000 as long as it is there we will take benefit of that by producing more zinc. Okay, that's uh, very helpful. So the second question is essentially on the cost of production. Now, this quarter, we also saw a very good control on cost. Cost went further down. And now it is uh, basically uh, a little bit uh, above the mid-range of what we guided uh, uh, for the year. Now, going ahead, uh, since coal, coal prices might just remain soft, other, I mean, you will get the other cost advantage also because volumes are expected to pick up. So why have we kept our cost of production guidance same? Uh, I mean, uh, shouldn't we be revisiting it now or uh, will we do it uh, maybe at the end of the third quarter also? So while uh, Sandeep will address the details, see the strategy is going forward. As you know, H2, the, as the quarter three, quarter four performances are much stronger. So we would always expect much better performance, both in terms of grade of material being mined, the operational performances, the current efficiencies, etc., etc., which would give us a cost advantage. While the coal prices may go up, at the same time, more and more renewable power will also drop in as, as time goes by. And uh, we are very confident of hitting the cost guidance as well, along with the metal guidance that we have given. Uh, maybe Sandeep can elaborate on this. Uh, 
Yeah, I mean, thanks uh, for the question, and I am sure uh, you are fine. Uh, regarding the cost, I think just wanted to highlight the renewable energy has helped to reduce the cost by by my nine dollar per ton, and our renewable power share has moved to from last quarter eight percent to fourteen percent. So it is very clearly that renewable energy is adding into the cost uh, benefit. And by quart uh, quarter four, we will be exiting around twenty three to twenty five percent with the renewable energy share. Of course, uh, the cost guidance, uh, as you said, mid. Uh, but I think we have also given the lower band of 1050. So it's uh, better to achieve the lower end of the guidance and to be a better rather than revising the guidance. But I'm sure we have a better cost uh, in terms of the what we are predicting. But we would like to keep it unchanged uh, between the 1050 to 1100. That has been the overall given. But we are confident that we will be delivering towards the lower end of the cost band. Okay, uh, that's very helpful. Sir. Thank you, and all the best. Thank you. Thank you. Participants, you may press star and one to ask a question. Next question is from the line of Kirtan Mehta from B O B Capital Markets. Please go ahead. Thank you, sir, for this opportunity. <clears throat> we had on the last call mentioned that we had appointed a consultant. for expansion to 2 million ton mine run rate and that report might be available by august september would you be able to share highlights from the report and recommendations no so uh, the report that we have now says that the mine have to be developed in a particular manner to make you know adequate uh, ore for 2 million ton so for that we are now uh, inviting discussions with mining contractors which are were global contractors so by the end of november we should be able to fix the global contractors whom we will start appoint for starting the mine development because that is the first part is the mine development then only we can produce uh, then the question uh, comes on the logistics uh, of how to uh, transport the material out of the mine and then the concentrator expansion which is feasible and very easy to do so that will follow but first part as far as uh, this upper 2 million ton is concerned project is feasible there is no doubt on that the it is only the mining contractors appointment and to see how uh, this the, the adequate metal in concentrate can be produced from the mine and how would that be linked to the exploration strategy because we will also have to sort of enhance exploration as obviously, well. obviously so we have got say 30 million ton metal in ore as resource and out of that we have got close to 12 million ton metal in ore as reserve so so that 12 million ton metal in ore as reserve provides at least 5 years which you require mandatorily for uh, mine planning for uh, for getting any approval through uh, ibm and other such uh, authorities right so with that we are safe on that we have got 5 years more than 5 years of proven reserve at 2 million ton uh, level now the question is we have got to subtract a 12 million ton you have got more than 18 million ton metal in ore in the resource category then the target would be to convert that into reserve at about 19% 90% level that would also go down to maybe 16 17 million ton of metal in ore as a reserve and then of course parallelly we will be adding more from jawar mine from adi mine would there are probability of adding more and more in the resource so next net About 10 years of reserve at 2 million ton level, that is 12 million ton current reserve, to expand to more than 20 million ton is very feasible and uh, visible also. And how would this be split across mines when we uh, sort of target the 2 million ton run rate? What would be the contribution of Zawar, Adi, and different mines? So exact percentage, I will I won't comment right now because let the full thing of the project be done. But of course, we would love to have as much production from Agucha as possible because that is the highest grade. and the biggest expansion that can happen with the current operation from uh, uh, is in jawar or jawar mine where there is virgin resources are available so we will have to make a combination so that you know overall grade which is around 7.2 7.3% does not vitiate because that will impact the cost right sir. one more question was about would you be able to highlight the sensitivity of your abita to zinc and silver prices for a change of say 100 dollars <coughs> in 1 dollar in silver so i think uh, it is uh, not only the sensitivity of the price is also the operational uh, point of view uh, given that uh, how much the lead mic would be there how much the zinc mic how the sk the lead mic would be there so that is also one of the major driver when we take the any pricing decision 
of course from a thumb rule number point of view uh, even at the uh, silver if that current level of 32 dollar if i just do theoretically the zinc prices has to be 34 3500 dollars if i have to make it break even just from your the, the uh, understanding point of view but which is more driven from the availability of the right to blend of the concentrate especially for the sk mine I, I hope uh, not actually, I'm able to say convince. that the thirty-two dollar silver. You said that the zinc price need to be around thirty-four hundred, thirty-five hundred for yeah. I actually did not follow yeah. that. I'll so I was that. saying, you were saying about the pyro lead mode versus the zinc lead mode to make it a break even. If the I have to produce zinc or silver, that is more from a technical driven decision. Availability of the concentrated especially on the SK mine, and as Mr. Mishra was saying, technical WIP liquidation. There are many other variables, but from the pricing point of view, as an analyst, it may be a break even if the silver is thirty-two dollar and zinc is thirty-five hundred dollar. Then we may make uh, silver and zinc beta equal, unless because currently the zinc element is thirty-three thousand dollar and silver thirty-two dollar. It's so better to make silver, but the metal also has to be made available to consume. Understood, sir. And the, probably the one more last question in terms of the zinc outlook. We had earlier expecting sort of zinc to reach three thousand dollar. We are already at that level. So, how do you see zinc progressing from here to the end of the financial year? So I have been very consistent in saying zinc balanced uh, stable price is three thousand dollar. So I don't expect a big change anywhere before December. November six is the U.S. election. I think the results should be out by January first week. Uh, I think January 6 is their uh, date for transfer of power. So by December 8, once we know the results of US election, I think that will be the you know, Fed rate cut has happened. China, they have uh, declared their policies uh, for boost up of the economy. Now the next big thing that can happen is uh, uh, US uh, elections, and uh, we will see how the world market reacts to that. Uh, rest of the events for geopolitical events, whether it's Russia, Ukraine, or Israel, Gaza, both are more than one year old and the whole business ecosystem has become have an oblivious to that. Sure, sir. Thanks for this answer. Thank you. Thank you. Next question is from the line of the card from Philip Capital. Please go ahead. Good evening, sir, and thank you for the opportunity. So, given that uh, our second half usually uh, you know, quite good in the volume terms and we already did 520 CKT in the first half, can we safely assume that we will at least meet the higher end of the volume guidance and probably uh, exceed the expectation? First, landing at the guidance is always important because these are talking of volume. Where we end, of course, it depends upon how much more quarter four can be compared to quarter three. So. I am with you on that, that I should uh, motivate my people to reach, uh, to reach the higher end of the guidance. But uh, let's see, we should be in the guidance. I think that is the, that is what we can safely enforce. Understood. So my second question pertains to the fumers. Uh, we didn't get update on the fumers, uh, uh, oh. that what stage they are in, and the pending uh, fumers, have they commissioned or not? So fumers, we have been ramping up. And of course, we have faced many technical difficulties in the fumer. One, of course, we could not get Chinese um, experts uh, at site because of various visa issues. But we have been taking their help remotely and trying to manage. Last three months of operation, uh, three or four months of operation, has given us sufficient knowledge as to uh, set right a lot of the either design inefficiencies or, uh, you know, uh, the early failures of certain parts of the equipment, which we are now taking a long shutdown and we are setting it right. We are very confident that after this shutdown, the fumer will come back in the way it will operate and we know exactly how to operate now. So we should get a fantastic results starting from quarter three into quarter four. So as of now, we have not uh, get any benefit of the fumers uh, no, so no, far. No, I think I think about three tons of silver we have got got out of uh, this fumer. So and about one and a half kg something like metal we have got. Understood. Sir, uh, silver prices versus the MCX. So uh, 
I believe we had to sell at certain discounts. So what was the discount in the two Q and what is the spot discounts? Oh, we don't sell. Oh, any? No, oh, no, no, no. We don't sell on the discount. Uh, the basically we compare our prices based on the Crystal benchmark. So whatever the Crystal published oh. the daily benchmark against that we do, and we have been always better than the Crystal benchmark. So we don't we don't sell at a discount uh, or the LVMA prices. Understood. And sir, just one last question, if I may pitch in. Uh, once I adapt plan uh, with commission, I just wanted to understand the, what is the additional EBITDA at the full utilization uh, at current prices that plan can make versus the assets which we are selling. You are talking about that plan with Debari plant. No, 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 that the fertilizer plant I'm talking about. Hindustan Zinc Alloy, yeah, yeah. So Hindustan Zinc Alloy has already given the EBITDA of 13 crore in the H1 and a quarter two it has been given 13, uh, sorry, 17 crore of the EBITDA in the Q2 itself. So at a full capacity level, it will be uh, give around 70 to 80 crore rupees of the EBITDA on a full year basis. Uh, sir, that is understood. My question was pertains to DAP by NPK fertilizer plant at Chandraya. Yeah, DAP, DAP. So DAP, DAP. DAP. Yeah, yeah. DAP. So once that is commissioned and ramped up, uh, obviously our uh, byproduct credits would also go, go down because we would be consuming it there. So habitat, uh, additional habitat expectations I just wanted to understand. So additional EBITDA over the asset price relation today, what we are getting, it will be around 450 to 500 crore on the 5 uh, lakh ton of the DAP and PK production. Understood, sir. That's all for my side and thank you for taking my questions. Thank you. Thank you very much. Participants, you may press star and one to ask a question. Next question is from the line of Ritesh Shah from Investec. Please go ahead. Uh, hi, sir. Thanks for the opportunity. Couple of questions. Uh, first is, uh, do we have any hedges at this point in time for second half or for next fiscal? Yeah. Hi, Ritesh. I hope you are doing good. Uh, yes, we have a hedges for the S2 1 lakh ton around uh, for the zinc. Is that three thousand eight dollar? As I said in my uh, opening remarks. And also the silver has been raised for the S2 83 ton at a price of thirty two point two six francs per trans. And sir, anything for next fiscal? No, nothing as of now for next fiscal. Nothing. Okay. Uh, my second question was, uh, any updates on Bamiya Kalan? Uh, specifically, uh, it's a big one. Uh, how are we looking at it? Any timelines? So Bamiya Kalan, my, uh, it's a boundary work, work has already been done by the 90% and the portal construction work is going to start. So we believe that next 12 to 18 months, because it's the mine like opening, so we have all the institutional approval in place. So mine opening is taking some portal construction reaching to the ore body. It should be, say, in my view, the, around the quarter four of the 26 uh, kind of thing, say, situation where we should be able to reach to the ore body. Thank you. This is helpful. Uh, so third question is on Supreme Court mining judgment recently. Uh, most of the companies uh, basically they have spoken about uh, hefty liabilities, but it's, it's more work in progress. There is no uh, clear cut uh, understanding on what the quantification is. Uh, sir, what is our take over here? I was just looking at our contingent liabilities. There is there is a number which is there, but would like to have your take on how we should understand or read this matter. So, Ritesh, I think just to update you, uh, I think that contingent liability number will not remain now. Whatever the number was there has been already provided. So, net impact on account of the Supreme Court judgment from the retrospective point of view has been 83 crore, which has been well provided in the books uh, in quarter two and appearing as part of the exceptional item. Uh, it's only 83 crores, right? All, also provided yes. for. Uh, that's right? Yes, yes. yes. Okay, that's that's useful. Uh, so just coming to a broader questions, uh, Hindustan Zinc hasn't provided for the dividend date. Uh, usually we see Hindustan Zinc going first and then Vedanta. Uh, any specific reasons or uh, not not the right question? No, on the on the on the board um, uh, minutes uh, you will notice uh, there's no discussion on dividend today. Okay, okay. we will not have any dividend intimation any time. Oh. Correct. Uh, so normally it's us first and then basically uh, Vedanta comes in. Uh, 
sequence is fine, but the timing is different. No, first the first activity has to start for the second activity. First activity will start with the notification for dividend, which has not happened. Correct. Fair thing. Fair thing. Uh, and so, just uh, uh, three quick questions. Uh, earlier, uh, the company was planning to uh, bifurcate the company into silver and zinc. Uh, is is it something which is on the table or is it on the back burner? No, no, nothing on the back burner. It is we, all the issues we are discussing with government, and whenever uh, you know both sides agree, it will happen. The government uh, disinvestment okay. is, uh, effort is also going on. So there are so many things happening parallelly. Okay, and so there were talks about setting up a zinc smelter in Gujarat. Uh, is it on the table or is no, it no, off? No, it's, it's not on the table. Okay, and lastly, sir, you you indicated a couple of numbers for uh, DAP and PK production. Uh, possible to give some timelines over here, please? So fertilizer, as per the committed timeline, is going to start in the FI26 between, uh, around Q3. Q3 F526. That's very useful. Thank you so much uh, for the answers. I really appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you, Ritesh. Thank you. A reminder to all the participants, you may press star and one to answer the question. Next question is from the line of Samangal Nevedia from Kodak Securities. Please go ahead. Yeah, good evening, sir. I just have one question left. Uh, uh, if you could please guide us on the capital structure and what sort of debt do we expect to see on the balance sheet on a steady state basis? Uh, this question is because in the first half we've given a substantial dividend and now we are sitting on almost 6,000 odd crores of net debt. Uh, so are we open to, uh, I mean for the dividend requirements etc, are we open to run a net debt balance sheet or this is just a timing thing and we would have a close to a net, uh, net debt zero balance sheet going forward? So, Sumangal, I think you rightly pointed out it's a timing mismatch. Uh, of course, uh, given that uh, 12,000 crore was given in the form of dividend and we have already generated free cash flow of 7,000 crore in the H1, and normally has to remain better. So, I think it's only a timing difference. Uh, of course, we are uh, having the capex as well. So, overall, we expect that uh, given a US dollar, 1 billion, we expect to generate free cash flow during this uh, year and uh, by a March end, we expect to be around 2,000 crore kind of net debt number at the year end. And uh, on a steady basis, we will be always in net cash, but uh, as we go for the 2 million ton of the uh, uh, expansion, we may look for the, some debt equity depending upon the our project IRS being a very, very high level. So we'll see what is the better capital allocation when we go for 2 million ton. However, in steady phase, we don't have anything at this point of time which should be worried about. Understood. Uh, just one more question. Given we are talking about a very long term target of 2 million tons, uh, we're losing two mines, which is our and RA in 2030, or, or we would be able to retain it uh, uh, because of our offer clause. Uh, is it possible to share what sort of, I mean, cost escalation scenarios are we building in internally, uh, given this expanded capacity will come in around that time itself, where would we have to? participate in the auction or at least match the highest bid. You will, you, will, you will appreciate in today's uh, dynamic economic scenario, we normally plan at the most for three years. So we are in 2024 and the event is likely to happen in 2030. It's six years away. So let's see what happens to the policy by then. The, the realization of the entire auction process also would be better known. So we'll see by then what happens. The student just went last question uh, um, given all our projects are working well next year could we expect very close to our rated capacity of 1.2 million tons in terms of uh, yeah yeah of course of course we will try we will uh, 1.2 million ton next financial year Understood. all right thank you sir and all the best thank you thank you very much a reminder to all the participants, you may press star and one to ask a question. As there are no further questions, I would now like to hand the conference over to Ms. Kritika Mehta for closing comments. Thank you, everyone. With this, 
we close today's earnings call. For any follow-up questions or clarifications on the results, please feel free to reach out to Investor Relations team. Thank you. Thank you very much. On behalf of Hindustan Zinc, that concludes this conference. Thank you for joining us, and you may now disconnect your lines. Thank you.